Hi everyone and welcome. My name is Kevin Hunt. I'm a Forex trader and I've been trading since 2015. Towards the end of this webinar, I'll be taking you through how to calculate, calculate and set up risk management plan and a very simple strategy to follow that can be traded while only uh, dedicating around 10 minutes in front of your screen each day. It's a very simple strategy. It takes very little time and there's people that are trading it that are successful now, and I can take you through the actual risk management setup for that strategy. Okay, before we get going, I need to point out, we need to do a risk disclaimer, that trading without knowledge of what you're doing can be risky, and that you should only ever trade with money that you can afford to lose. Right from the start, you have to accept responsibility for any positions that you take while trading Forex markets. Trading Forex can be risky, and you need to know exactly what you're doing and you need to take responsibility right from the moment you hit buy or sell and you take any position. Okay, let's move on. So when I started out way back in, it was probably about 2014 when I actually started looking into Forex trading. And uh, I started out like pretty much everyone else does. I was running around like a headless chicken looking online at the massive information that's available, not knowing where to start or who to believe and trust. This is the thing. A lot of the things you look at online are very obviously scams or they just don't work or there's people not trading the system that they're selling to you. But um, actually weeding through that, actually sifting through it and finding who you can trust and what does work is a real problem. Now, I've spent a lot of money working with different mentors, trying to get to the bottom of what makes a successful trader. I also managed to blow up two accounts during that time. So I was in that learning process. I was looking online. And without any, I didn't know any personally. I didn't know any Forex traders. I couldn't go to anyone and get advice and say, who do you recommend? It was like, you know, you just go out there and you, you're just... I don't know, it's, it's, it's just such a difficult thing to do. You're looking here, you're looking there, you get information from one person. Should I be a day trader, position trader, swing trader, you know, whatever, a scalper? And you're getting all this information thrown at you. Once you start getting out there as well and you start looking into these things, then you start to get the emails flying through and all the advice from the so-called professionals. And it really is a minefield. You have to be so, so careful um, when you're actually when you're actually looking out for someone to work with. Now, like I say, I spent a lot of money. I can remember going to, I can remember going to um, web, uh, not webinars, um, seminars in central London, some of the top hotels, the Dorchester, and some of the hotels dotted around like the Sheraton but over at Heathrow Airport. And it was costing me a fortune going, to, going into these, um, these seminars, listening to these people who seemed to be obviously successful but was it success on doing these seminars or was it actually success as traders? And it was 2015 that I actually found a trader, very unusual, who, as she's, tra as, as she's teaching, she shows what she's doing online. She actually shows you her trading live and um, everything is posted on Twitter. I joined her, signed up with a mentorship, paid, I don't know, $190 -odd a month for the education. And that was it. I was working with her and it worked out fine. It's got to a point now where I'm actually working with her and I'll teach London traders, people trade in the London session. And uh, I also do one-on-one -on -one, um, one -on -one sessions with individual members. So that's it, weeding out and finding the person to work with, the strategy to work with is really, really difficult. It really is. So the other thing is, once you find something or someone, which strategy do you use? There's, there's probably about five or six different strategies, mainline or mainstream strategies that you can work with. But those strategies, they can, or, or systems of trading, can have so many different aspects and ways of trading it. Different stop losses, different risk management, and all these different things that are thrown into the equation that you have to sift through and uh, you have to find out which way you're going to go, which, which, 
Uh, you know, which, which strategy are you going to go with? Now, the thing was, it took me a while. Yeah, like I said, I spent a lot of money with different mentors trying to uh, get to the bottom of what makes a successful trader. I also managed to blow up two accounts, like I say, during that learning process. And that, <laughs> that was really a massive learning process. It pulled me right in line and got me to knuckle down, get my head down and make sure that I've get, got everything right. By the way, if anyone's got any questions as we're going through, please feel free to type them in the chat box and I'll answer those as we go through. Okay, so you've got three elements. Three elements when you're, uh, when you're working. Sorry, one second. I've got a slight technical hitch here. One second. Okay, that should be fine. So one thing, one thing that took me quite a while was to understand what it was. You know, there are so many different ways and methods of trading, different strategies that, you know, you can equate many of those. So you can, you can look online and you can find genuine traders who post their results, even show their results and, and show what they're doing live. Not a problem at all. But those traders, they're working with many, many different styles of trading and different strategies that they apply to those, those methods of trading. So what you need to do is work out, or what I couldn't work out was, how is it that there's so many different, you know, so many different aspects to this trading, and this guy's doing that, and this guy's doing that, and all of these different ways, very, very different ways, but they were all successful. The ones that I actually managed to lock down and find out that they were genuine. So you've got all these different strategies, all of these different methods of trading, and you find these people, many different people, using these different aspects and, and, and ways of approaching the markets, and they're successful. And it suddenly struck me, out of, out of those, all of those traders, it, it took me quite a while to understand what it was, the many different ways, methods and strategies that, that can equate to a successful trader, but it doesn't matter which option you go for, Every single one of these methods has three elements that are identical. So you could look at a swing trader, you could look at a position trader, you could look at a trend trader, a day trader, a, a, a scalper. All of those different traders trade in different methods, but there are three elements of their trading that every single one of them has in common. Okay? So these three elements, which strategy to use? You've got to have a strategy. You must have a strategy. It's not important so much as to what strategy you use. It is a very, very small part of the equation. In fact, the strategy is only, if you look at the whole picture as 100%, the strategy only makes up approximately 10% of that equation. That's the importance of the strategy. Obviously, you've got to find someone you can trust, someone who's using a tried and tested system. But once you've found that, what you need to do then is look at a strategy that suits you. And when I say that, it's like, okay, so, you, you know, you're looking at different strategies. The method that you use to trade really isn't that important at all. As long as it's been tried and tested, and it also it's got to have an edge to work. And that also, it needs to lock in with your lifestyle and the time that you have to trade. It's no use trying to trade uh, using a scalping or a day trading method if you've got a full-time job. And you can't find the time to sit in front of the charts for a few hours each day, which is what you need if you're a day trader or you're a scalper. You need to actually physically be there in front of the charts, looking at the charts while you're trading. It's no good trying to work as a long-term trend trader or a swing trader if you don't have what it takes to hold positions overnight and at the weekends. You usually find that trend, um, swing traders and trend traders, the longer term trend traders, usually, not always, but usually you'll find they're more experienced traders. They've been in the game for a while and they understand the market moves. They understand about how to lock things, how lock profits in. And um, <clears throat> they're, they're okay to leave their positions open overnight and uh, over the weekends as well. That also sort of like adds a risk to, to the trading method that you're using. But, um, so that's something else to consider. Strategy is only a small part of it, 10%, but you must find a strategy that suits you. 
The fact is there's so many methods that can be applied to trading Forex markets. There will be one out there that suits you just fine. And this is the thing about um, trading Forex. You'll always, always find something that will suit everyone. So if it's someone who's got a full-time job, they're working really long hours, they'll get to a point where they can look at the longer-term trading, spend less time in front of the charts. Or this strategy that I'm going to show you at the end of this uh, webinar, um, that's the kind of thing that would suit someone with little time. Or you might find someone who's, I don't know, in a job where they get a bit of time where they can spend their own time on a computer and they're okay for scalping, for day trading, that kind of thing. So, number one, the strategy. The least important factor in becoming a profitable trader. 10% of the whole equation. The second element is about 30% of the equation, of the overall picture. It's risk management. Without it, without that risk management, you will without doubt blow up your account. You have to work with very, very tight risk management to hold on to your money. You need to decide right from the start a set of rules. How many positions you should take at any one time or in a given session. And then of course, you need to stick with that rule. That can be quite difficult, it really can. Every trader should work with a stop loss too. And this is all part of the risk management. Working with a stop loss will protect your capital. Means that if you if a position goes against you, you take a position that goes against you, you know exactly how much of your capital you will lose right from the start before you actually start trading. Let me just check something here. Okay, just checking that everything's working. Just checking that everything's working okay on here. Okay, all seems to be fine. It's just that there was a, a few little glitches on, on both ends and I just wanted to make sure that it's still working. Okay, so where was I? So you, you, you must make sure that you decide how much of your account you should risk. You've got to work with a stop loss, working without a stop loss, and you do get traders that do it. For me, it's madness. You imagine you take a position and it goes against you. Where's the cutoff point? It can just run and run and run in the wrong direction and you'll end up with blowing your account. And the only people that I know who do that are very, very wealthy people who have got deep pockets. They're also very stubborn people who won't ever accept that they're wrong. <laughs> no one knows if they're right or wrong when they're trading. You don't look at it as being right or wrong. You look at it as a series of probabilities and over a series of trade with good risk management, you should, you should come out on top. So working out how much of your account you should lose on any given trade if it goes against you. We'll all take losses, even the most experienced traders. Traders who have been trading for many, many years accept that they will take losses. They can't be right 100% of the time. It's impossible. If you work with a good mentor or a coach, while learn the strategy. They'll advise you on this. They'll apply their risk management to whichever strategy it is that they're teaching you. Personally, I work my account with half a percent risk on any given trade, meaning that if I take a position and it goes against me um, and it hits my stop loss, I'll only lose half a percent of my capital. It's as simple as that. And half a percent of your capital, it's, it's really quite an easy... Uh, pill to swallow if you like it's 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 not that difficult it doesn't break your heart too much when you see just half a percent of your capital go once you get trading and once you get a bit of experience that is any loss to start with is very difficult to uh, accept but that comes into the uh, one of the later elements so half a percent is what i risk on any trade that i take for someone who's starting out if you're brand new to trading don't rush it. Don't try and become a millionaire overnight or, or in a few months. It just won't happen. I promise you, you'll never get rich quick as a Forex trader. But if you're careful and if you're sensible and if you're disciplined, you can gradually build your account and you can compound that account. And that allows you to place bigger trades. And that also, you're sticking, still sticking within your risk management. That also allows you to increase your lot size, which will give you bigger returns. And that's when you really see it start to grow. 
So it's a slow game. It's not a, not a fast paced thing where you're going to jump in and make a fortune overnight. It's something you have to build on slowly. Again, all part of the risk management. So while learning a strategy and making mistakes during the process, losing a small amount of your capital is so much easier to deal with mentally. Now, speaking of being able to deal with it mentally brings me on to the third and the biggest part of the whole picture that you'll need to take on board to be a profitable trader. It's mindset. So we've got 10% that's down to the strategy. We've got 30% that's down to the risk management. 60% of the whole equation is down to mindset, getting the mindset right. The psychological side of trading equates, to, as I say, to easy 60% of the overall picture. It's the biggest cause of people failing as well to make it as traders. Almost anyone can follow a set of, a set of instructions and apply them using a computer that's linked to a trading platform. So someone gives you a list of instructions. OK, if the pound US dollar does this, you do that. And if it does this, you do that. And if it does this, you do that. But what happens is, is you start trading with your own money. You start trading with a live account. Most people can follow a risk management plan. Even if they're no good with numbers, you simply use a, a, a calculator. It's that simple. Now imagine this, okay? You're sitting there. You've been working with a strategy. You've been working on a demo account, practicing and learning that strategy. It's all starting to come together. You're becoming confident. More and more confident in the market. Suddenly, you switch over to a live account. Now, from that demo account, where you knew it wasn't real money, that has a massive effect on your psychology. All the time you're not using real money, it's not so much a bad deal when you lose money. Saying that, it is quite a strange thing. Even when you're working, even when you're working with a demo account, you want to be right. As human beings, we're told, right from children, don't do that. Don't do this. Don't do that. You have to be right all the time. You go through school. You have to pass exams by being right. You have to, you know, you have to achieve. You have to be right all the time. And it's against human nature to be wrong and accept that you're wrong. Some people just can't admit they're wrong. You get people who have arguments with people and they just won't back down. They can't be wrong. But as a trader, you have to accept that you will be wrong. You'll take a position. That position will go against you. You'll take a stop. Now, although I'm saying you're wrong, in a sense, you're not really wrong. When you take a position as a trader, you don't know which way it's going to go. The moment you hit that button, it's got a 50-50 chance of going up or going down, whichever way that you're going, making it right or wrong. So you have to accept that you're going to take positions, you're going to lose money. That's fine with a demo account. It's quite easy to accept it. When it comes to real money, when you've got your money on the line, that's when the problems start. So imagine you've been trading, you've been working with a demo account, you've got it right. You suddenly decide, you wake up one Monday morning, you think, right, this week I'm going to start work, trading with a live account. You put some money in into your live account. You open up the live account platform. You take a position. And the moment you hit that button to buy or sell, sorry, to buy or sell a pair in the Forex markets, You've got skin in the game. You've got a part of your, your capital, your hard-earned money is sitting there and it's in the game. It's your money and you're seeing increases if the trade's going your way. But if now you suddenly see that position is going against you, you see your trading capital dropping, you're now seeing a losing position. Now, this is where you'll start to see most people having serious, serious problems with the psychological element. And it's this point where most people fail. Like I say, they can't accept they're wrong, they can't accept they're losing, and they fight it, and they cheat, and they break the rules, and they break their risk management. I've seen plenty of traders, traders that I've worked with, traders that I've taught the strategy that I use. They'll start trading, and they're doing excellent, they're doing so well with a demo account. Then they apply their real money to it. And I always insist that they start on a small amount. So they work with a very, very small amount to start with. They complain. It's not enough. It's not worth it. I'm wasting my time. But it's not. You start very, very small and gradually build. 
And those losses become easier to bear. And the more you get used to it, the easier it is to increase your lot size and take um, bigger losses regarding the, the amount of capital that you lose. But of course, at the same time, your wins are increasing as well. So then you start to see the people, you start to weed out the people that are going to be successful and those that are not. And it's the ones who suddenly have, I don't know, four losing trades in one session. And then what you see is they increase their lot size. They're determined to win those losses back. They take another position and they've increased their lot size. They've broken their risk parameters. And straight away, they lose that trade as well. They're losing sometimes double what they've already lost. And it's those traders who they find it very difficult to pull out of that downward spiral and they'll usually blow up their account. And some of them just can't accept it in the long run and they never make it as successful traders. It's all about starting small. It's all about building slowly. That's what you need to do. So any questions? Any questions on any of that from anyone? If you've got any questions at all, like I say, please type them in. I'm just going to take a sip of water because my mouth is, my throat is very, very dry. So just a quick recap. Let's just, just do a quick recap before we move on. Okay, the thing that really turned me on to trading and suddenly it was like a, it was like a eureka moment. It was when I realized it doesn't matter what you're trading, the way you're trading, everyone sticks with the same three things. You've got the strategy. You must have a good strategy. Second, risk management. Third, psychology. And even right from the start, the psychological side of it. You should be working on it. Even if you're considering being a trader, you should start working on it straight away. And one, there's a book that I'll always recommend, and I don't get anything for recommending it. Uh, trader, sadly, guy that died, the guy, the author, he was a very successful trader. His name is Mark Douglas. And he wrote two books, Trading in the Zone and The Disciplined Trader. Look them up on Google. And they're just, they're invaluable. They really are. They are so, so good for working on the psycholo psychological element of trading. Read those, absorb those, and you'll understand what I'm talking about when I'm saying about those who will never make it. You understand. If once you've read those books, you'll understand what it takes to be a good trader. And it, everything is there for you. You work on what you read in those books, and it will work out for you. Okay, no questions coming in. So let's move on. Right, what I'm going to do, I'll bring up I'll bring up a live chart, okay? Now, the strategy that I'm going to show you, I managed to get past that first bit a little quicker than I thought I would, but anyway, we'll, we'll carry on with this and it will leave time at the end if anyone's got any questions about this strategy. So, just adjusting these screens a little bit. There we go. Okay. So first of all, I'll tell you what I'll do. When you first open an account, for those who are brand new to trading, you'll first open an account, you'll see something like this. That's just so hard on the eyes. There's not a lot of information there. You can adjust all of this, the colors, the layout, the size of the candles, the type of candles, everything you want is, is fully customizable on here. And uh, this is how I have mine. I just find it really easy to work with. It's kind of calm in the colours that are there. And uh, and sometimes, believe me, the way the markets run, especially when they're going against you, having a calming screen is quite, quite an important point. So I'm going to show you a strategy that works on weekly charts. Now, it's sort of like a, a, a set and forget trading strategy. And the way that it works is you sit down in front of your charts when the Forex markets are closed. So looking at London time, it's around about midnight London time when the markets close on a Friday, on a Friday night. And then the markets don't reopen again until Sunday night at midnight. So you're looking at Monday through to Friday, the markets are live and they're running. And then for sat Saturday and Sunday, you can't access the markets. Although currencies are still moving, price is still moving, 
the Forex markets are not open for anyone to trade. So while they're closed on a Saturday or a Sunday, you need to sit down in front of the charts. The way that I trade, I'll work with, so I'm just trying to, that's it, I can see all with my screen now. Okay, so I work with 10 pairs, Euro US dollar, Euro Japanese yen, pound US dollar, pound Japanese yen, Australian dollar, Australian yen, US dollar, Japanese yen, US dollar CAD, Canadian dollar, Japanese yen, and the New Zealand dollar, US dollar. They're the 10 pairs that I always trade with. Now, I'm always getting asked why those 10 pairs out of all the currencies around the world and the different matches that you get in Forex, why those 10? Well, my main trading strategy is uh, I'm a Forex price action day trader. Now, working as a day trader, I work with extremely tight stops and I'm looking for the pairs with the lowest spreads. And these are, these are the ones, this 10 pairs, they've got the lowest spreads. And any other type of trading that I do, whether it be a, a swing trade or a weekly trade, I don't often deviate from my price action day trading, but sometimes I do. And also to demonstrate other trading strategies to people, I'll use the same 10 pairs. It's as simple as that. They're already set on my charts and I'll work with them. You can work with whatever you want, any currency pair you want. But these 10 pairs, like I say, the spreads are low, lowest on these. Um, across the board and that's why I stick with these so first of all you set your charts up so you're looking at weekly charts you can see that up here there's a this same chart 15 minute hourly one month one day one week so you're working with weekly charts you're waiting until Saturday or Sunday when the markets are closed now each one of these bars for those who are just starting out each one of these these are called candlesticks okay you've got I'll show you on this uh let me see okay on this one this here is the body of the candle and these little black lines coming out top and bottom they're called the wicks of the candle so price action's moving let me see if i can zoom in one more on this yeah great okay so price on this particular candle, it opened here. This is where it opened. And it looks like price dipped down. And then it pulled back up. And then it moved up here. And then you got this spike, but then it finally settled there before closing. So that there is the body of the candle. This is the high that it reached. This is the low that it reached, those wicks. So that's just a brief explanation of what you're looking at regarding the candlesticks that we work with. Let me pull that back out. Okay, each one of these candlesticks on this time frame represents one week in the markets. So you can just ignore this most of the week. On the Saturday or Sunday, you'll come to your charts and you'll look at um, you'll look at these these charts as they are at the moment. Now. Obviously, you need to work out your risk management. Before you decide to take any positions, you need to work out your risk management and make sure that any positions that you take are clearly in line with your risk management. Okay, let me just flick over to this presentation sheet again. I'll just drop this down for a moment. Okay. In fact, let me bring up Okay, so working with your risk management, this website here is fantastic, babypips.com. Go to babypips.com, search for their position size calculator. This is how you work out your trading lot size, i.e. whenever you take a position, what size should you take? You don't want to over leverage, you don't want to take too much because you can easily blow up a count like that, like I've said. So come to this website. And um, you put your figures in here. So right, we're looking at we're looking at this area here on this web page. Going back to the going back to this, I need to see what capital I'm trading with. So this account here, let me bring it up. Let me bring it up. Okay, this account here. 
actually has $23,000, just over, a little bit more than $23,000. I always work with dollars as well. I keep it uniform like that, and it's easier for me to work right the way across the board. Every Everything that I'm working with, stick with dollars, and I don't get confused. Okay, so $23,000 US dollars is the trading capital. So let's drop that down again. So what you do, you put your account balance in here, $23,000. You put your account currency in here, US dollars, or whatever you're working with. <clears throat> then, as I said earlier, risk parameters, you, you put in here what your risk is. I always work with, five, with uh, 0.5, so I'm working with half a percent risk. And as I said earlier, if I take a position and it goes against me, I'll lose half a percent of my capital, no big deal. When you're starting out, you should drop this down to 0 0.25, quarter percent of your capital, just to get going, to get started. And then when you, when you feel more comfortable, increase it to 0 0.5. Some traders that I work with, they're working with one, one percent. Now that's a little bit too high for me and it's outside of my comfort zone. So that's why I stick with 0 0.5 and I, I do okay with that. It keeps me on a, an even kill. It saves me getting too upset or agitated when I'm losing and um, and stops me becoming too euphoric and thinking I'm the best trader ever when it comes to me winning. And that does happen as well. That's part of the psychological element. Some people, they have a couple of winning weeks, they think they're the best thing ever, and then they start ramping it up, pushing up the uh, lot sizes, and of course they, it all goes wrong. It fails miserably. So that's the risk uh, percentage you put in. Your stop loss. I'm always working with 10 pip stop losses. Which means if I take a position, say if I took a position long, let's bring this into play in a second. Okay. So Christ is doing this. I take a position long. I've got my entry position here. I put my stop loss in immediately, and that's 10 pips for me. I see this move up a little bit, and it comes down. Bang. It hits my stop loss. I'm out for 10 pips. And that 10 pips equates to 0 0.5 or half a percent of my capital. And that's how this works out. That's how this calculator works. Okay, currency pair. Like I say, you've seen the 10 pairs that I work with. This is the Euro, US dollar. And with all of those figures put in, I can calculate that. And standard lots is what we're looking at. It works out to 1.15. So I usually round up. If it's five, I'll round up to the next figure. So I'll say 1.2 for the Euro, US dollar. And what you do, you just go through all of your pairs, all of the pairs that you're trading, and you calculate them. You only have to do this once a week, because obviously, you know, one week you'll have a winning week, so your capital will go up. You need to recalculate. The following week, you might have a loss, so you need to recalculate. So once a week, you just run through this, and you can work out what your trading lot size is going to be. And let me get back over to this. So this is the list. This is the list of the 10 pairs that I trade. And going through that baby pips calculator, these are the lot sizes that I work with. So Euro US dollar is 1.2. Euro Japanese yen is a lot size of 1.6. Pound US dollar 1.2 and so on and so on. So you just go through all of the pairs you're going to trade. You total them together. On mine, it comes to 14.4 lot size. And you divide that by 10, the 10 pairs that you're trading. So it gives me a lot size of 1.44. Now that's essential. Every position that I set out, every position that I take needs to be 1.44 because that gives me an average of any of these, these pairs, if I take a stop, it'll only be half a percent of my capital. If anyone's not sure about that, if you need that explained again, let me know and I can always run back through it. This is going to be videoed. You can always play this back at a later date anyway. Okay, so that's how you work out your lot size. And it's an essential part of your risk management. It really is. Okay, back on the charts. So when you're looking at an MT4 platform, up the top, you can click on tools and options okay tools and options and you get this window come up you need to select this here size by default you click default and you type in there your lot size 
1.44. Any position that I take, it will automatically show up as 1.44. And you can't go wrong then. You can't make a mistake by placing a trade that's not enough or too much. Every time I place a trade, and you'll see in a minute, it will come up as 1.44. Okay, that's fine. Once you've done that, you need to restart the platform. You need to restart MT4. Otherwise, it doesn't install it into the software. So do that. Once you've done that, then you're ready to start setting up your trades. We can drop this down now, get rid of this. Okay. So let's imagine that this candle, this latest candle, is what's happening this week. Change that color, sorry. Okay, so this candle here is this week. It started on Monday as the clock just went past the red, well, it depends on the broker, I suppose, but on my broker, it's just, just after midnight. And then it runs through till midnight on Friday. So this candle here is this week and where we are at the moment. Let's imagine that it's Saturday or Sunday now. Imagine these markets are closed and I need to start setting up ready for the week ahead. So I sit in front of the charts and I want to place a trade. Now, it's really simple with this strategy. What we're looking for is... This high and this low, they're going to be our entry points. So when the new candle opens at the start of the following week, after the weekend, we've got positions where we can take it long if it hits through this level, or we can take it short if it comes through this level. So imagine Sunday, midnight, markets open, prices start moving. Monday, markets pick up a little bit of momentum. Suddenly, it pushes up and it breaks into there. You're entered into that trade with your pending order. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Okay, so pending orders placed. You're ready to make a trade. For those of you that are new, I'll show you about setting up a pending order. This area here, I'll tell you what, we can set it up anywhere because once it's in place, then we can drag it down. So... If you just right click up here, you can go to trading and you can go to buy stop. Right, buy stop means that if price comes up and hits that, you'll be taken into that trade. You'll be positioned and you'll be positioned long looking for price to continue up. Okay. So we've got that. We drag that down into place. We want it on the top of that spike there. That's our entry point. And like I say, we're, we're looking at this as if it's the weekend, markets are closed, and we're getting ready for the following week. Okay, down the bottom here, you also want to place a pending order just in case the market moves down and you want to get in short. So you come down here, you right click, you go sell stop, and you drag this into place on that low. And again, once the market's open, if it comes down here and it comes through that entry point, you'll be in this short and you'll be looking for a move to the downside. Okay, in addition to that, you also need your stop losses in place. Double click the line. In fact, yeah, yeah, you'll have to do it like this to start with. What you can do with this, you can double click that entry point, that order point, and then on this, we're looking for a 10 pip stop, okay? So we can pull this down. You see the entry point there? We're looking at these last few figures, 99.8 99 it is. So we're looking at 88.8 .8 as a 10 pip stop. And I'll show you what I mean when I get to that. 88.8 .8 there, that's our stop level for this entry. We need to zoom in a bit to be able to get close up on that. Okay, that's as big as we can get it. So, you're looking at that green line, that's your entry point. This black line is your stop loss. So if position moves and it comes back down again, you'll get stopped out losing 10 pips. And if you just hover your mouse over that, it should come up. There you go. That's 11 pips, I need to adjust that a little bit. So let's double click it. Yeah, oh, sorry, 88, I need 89, don't I? 
So 89.8 modify. So there we go. So now 10 pips. You'll see there that that's showing 10 pips as a stop loss. You also need to put your take profit in place. So again, right click on that green line. Uh, sorry, double click on that green line to open this up. And you take profit. You need to put that up at 20 pips. What you can do, you can put it up anywhere like that. And then you can drag it into place. So you can drag this down and... Have a look, just trying to get it right. That's 21.3. Let me just bring that down accurately. Modify. So there's 20 pips. So what we're working with here is a two to one risk to reward ratio, meaning, let's clear that off. So meaning that we take a position. If it goes wrong, we lose 10 pips. If it goes right, we make 20 pips. Two to one risk to reward, as simple as that. Now, if you work with a two to one risk to reward, you can be wrong 66% of the time and you still come out on top. You still come out a winning trader. 66% of the time. So that's why the risk to reward is very, very important. And it's really important that you stick with it. Just checking to see if there's any questions coming up. No, all following along so far. Okay, so that's just that one. Of course, this is taking me an age because I'm explaining it to you. Once you start doing this, you can get this done within 15 minutes. Once a week, 15 minutes, on a weekend, you can get this set up across all of the pairs. Okay, now the same, same goes with the... In fact, let me get a pair that's got a bigger move so we can see it a little bit more clearer. So if I go through these pairs. Yeah, see, because, okay, this one's better because we've got a bigger candle and it's easier to actually show you what we're looking at. See if I can increase that a bit. Uh, hang on a minute. Oh, not so, oh, I can see the questions coming up now. Sorry about that. I've just been informed that there's some questions coming in. Sorry. Okay, let me just run through those quickly. Da, da, da. Edward, hi, Edward. Da, da, let's have a look. Hi, Chalita. <laughs> I don't know about that, Edward. Um, what's happening in China, I don't know. Okay, just logged on. 1% growth a day, realistic, from TikTok. 1% a day, yes, absolutely. And you'll, you, if you just try this, try this, um, try this method, try this strategy that I'm showing you on a demo account. Try it for a month, and you'll see the kind of rewards that you're getting. 1% is very, very realistic. As... I don't often use this because I'm more into the markets and into the day trading. My day trading, price action day trading, I'm probably on average making 4, 4%, 3% a day, something like that. Overall, when I, when I look at everything over the years, about 3 or 4% a day. And with this, 1% a day, very, very um, easily achieved. Okay, so let's get back onto this. So setting the charts up on a Saturday or Sunday, we've already set this the high up, let's say. So we're going to go buy stop. We'll put in um, our stop loss, which will be uh, 33.6. So we'll just change that number there to 30. Modify. That gives us Wow, this is even closer. So I'm trying to find a, a chart where you can actually see it. It's because we're so close. The actual stop loss and the entry point are, are just too tight. Do you know what I mean? They're so close. So let me just 
open that up again. Ah, it didn't actually take that, sorry. Bring that down to 33. So you can see the price where we get in is 43.6. The stop loss is gonna be 33.6. Modify, that's better, it's showing now. So the green line is the entry, the black line is the stop loss. And you do the same, but going down for a sell. So down the bottom here, you right click, you go trading, you go to sell stop. That gives you your entry point. Double click and your stop loss, what we got there, 87. Your stop loss is gonna be 97.6. So we can bring that up, change that to 97.6, modify, and that gives us our 10 pip stop loss. So this suddenly starts moving, hits your entry point, comes back down, doesn't go the way you want it to, you're knocked out for 10 pips. Or price starts moving down, hits your entry point, doesn't quite work out, hits your stop loss, you lose 10 pips. But at the same time, you must, must set up your take profits at the same time. So on that there, entry point is at 43.6, it's gonna be 63.6. So we just change that number there to 63.6. That's our take profit. And that will give us 20 pips. Any questions? If there's anyone that's not sure about that, I'll go through another one if you want. And like I say, once a week, you just do that and you run through all of these pairs and you set all of them up right the way across the board. So you cover, you might only want to trade four pairs. Me, I'll stick with the 10 because it's what I do with my price action day trading. Okay, so you set that up on all of these and that's it. You just monitor it. So once or twice a day, you come onto your charts, you just flick through, and you can do it any time of day, and you can see if anything's taken profit or if anything's been stopped out. You don't re-enter, though. That's the thing with this. You don't take a re-entry. So let's imagine – it's going to be easier for me to draw this, I think, and we can see it clear. So – I'm just bringing up the drawing tool. Okay, so we're seeing price do this. In fact, I'll do that with thicker lines and we can see similar to what we're seeing on the screen. Bringing this up. I want to get it so you can see it clearly. Okay, this should be good. Okay, so let me just draw a few of these candles. Okay, we've got a downside move there. We've got a downside there. Might have a next one up, another one down. So we're seeing this kind of price movement. Let's uh, move over to the green candles. We want to see some green as well, obviously. So we see price from this one move up and then move up, comes back down, moves up again. Okay, we're seeing this. So this candle here, this one here, change that drawing tool. This candle here is going to be our weekly candle. Markets are closed over the weekend. This is the one we're setting up on. So what we'll do is we'll set Here and here. These are our two entry points. Price goes up, we take it long. Price goes down, we take it short. Again, remember we're working with weekly candles. So you're looking at a whole week that this can sit there. And if it doesn't make it, if price just does this sideways drift, doesn't matter. You've got your positions in place. And then at the end of the week, you scrap it and then you do the same thing the following weekend. Once a week, you set this up. So once you've got those positions in place, you'll then set your, draw these like this. You'll then set your stop losses. Okay. 
and you'll also set your take profits. And like I say, you go through every single one of these peers and do this, setting these up, ready for those weekly breaks. It's called a weekly breakout strategy. And it's taking a breakout from the, the previous week's high and low. This being the high of the week, this being the low of the week. All on the live charts. It's just very, very obvious to see with these weekly candles. What we got one, this is the week we're on at the moment. One, two, three weeks ago, that was the high of the week. This was the low of the week. Following week, high and, uh, low and high, high and low. And then this week, this is as low as it's been so far. This is as high as it's been. Okay, any questions? If there's anyone not sure about any of that that we've seen, if anyone wants me to set up another chart, I'll do that quite happily. But uh, it is such a basic strategy, it really is. You're working with good risk management. And it's, it's something that someone with little time, you can do it over a weekend. You can do it, you know, when you get home from work, if someone's got a full-time job. Even if someone's working over the weekend, there's going to be a point over the weekend where you can spend 15 minutes just setting this up and that's it, you're done for the week. Just log in once a day, twice a day, have a look and see how it's doing. And you'll be pleasantly surprised, I believe. Okay, no questions. Okay, we've got uh, what we've got left. We've got about nine minutes left. So what I'll do, I'll just do a recap of what we've spoken about during this during this webinar. <clears throat> so we're looking at the three elements. The, the turning point for me as a trader back in 2015 was finding out that every single trading strategy, every single trader, successful trader in the world, work with three elements, all the same, identical, even though their strategies are different, the amount of capital is different, the method of trading is different. These three categories, everyone follows. It's a strategy. You need a tried and tested strategy with an edge. So important. Well, it's the least important. It's 10% of the whole equation, but you must have it. Second part is risk management. Everyone has to work with risk management, working with stops. And um, that risk management is what's going to save your account. And working with risk management, as I've just said, working with a two-to-one risk, risk to reward management, that way you can be wrong 66% of the time when you take a position and you'll still make money. I'll tell you what I can do. I'll give you a quick example here and you can try this out. Okay, that risk management thing. Let me just briefly explain this. So we're looking at a two... Oh, wrong pen. Let me just bring this up. Right. We're working with a two to one risk to re reward. Okay. Now, if you get a coin, or maybe get five coins because some of them might be weighted, get five coins and flip those coins one after the other and do it a hundred times. Every time the coin you flip lands, mark on a piece of paper whether it landed heads or whether it landed tails. Try this, give it a try, and you'll be amazed how it works out. Now, flipping a coin you've probably got a 50-50 chance. It might be slightly different if the coin is slightly weighted, if there's a chip taken out of one side, but flipping a coin, you're looking at a 50-50 chance of coming up heads or coming up tails. There's two sides, 50-50. So you flip those coins 100 times. Now, mark on a piece of paper, as I say. Every time it lands heads, mark it down. Every time it lands tails, mark it down. And then every time it lands heads, you imagine that you're winning $2. Every time it lands towels, imagine that you're losing $1. That's all that a two-to-one risk to reward is. And I guarantee you, flipping a coin 100 times, you'll come out on top money-wise. Two-to-one risk to reward, you can be wrong more than 66% of the time. The coin has got a 50-50 chance of coming up heads or towels. Try it. Try it, and it, you'll see how it comes up. I'm just checking the questions again. So, yeah, that's the two-to-one risk to reward. That's the risk management. And then the final part, that risk management is about 30% of the equation. Uh, the final part and the most important part is a psychological element. I'd recommend everyone reads the two books 
by Mark Douglas. I can say there's nothing in it for me. It's just something that was a key point of my trading, and it's what helped me become a successful trader. Um, the, the quality of his writing and the, the way that he dissects everything and, and gives you clear, concise descriptions of why and how these things work and the way to approach the markets. It's, it's enlightening. It really is. As a trader, I'd say it's enlightening. So have a look at that because it's the psychological element that most people fail on. Um, as greed comes into play, fear of missing out comes into play, euphoria comes into play, depression comes into play. You start losing and you see your capital going down. So many traders suffer with depression. But the thing to do, and there's something else as well, it's just sprung to mind. People said to me as I was coming into trading, some of those mentors that I paid a lot of money to go and see up in the London hotels, they said to me, when you trade, you've got to be emotionless. You can't trade with emotions. Okay, sure enough, you can't trade with emotions, but you as a, a human being, you will never, ever eradicate emotion. Emotion is there every second of your life. Even when you're sleeping, you're dreaming, you're experiencing emotions. So all I do is I just concentrate on making sure that whatever my emotions are, whether they be good, bad, if someone's upset me out in the street or whatever it is, you know what I mean? You've you, you got something going on, uh, you need some building work doing, you've got a, a bit of expense on the house, that's going to change your emotions. But when you sit down in front of the charts, however you're feeling and whatever your emotions are, don't let those emotions affect your trading. You stick with the strategy like a robot over and over and over again. You won't do away with emotions, but you can take emotions out of your trading. Right, how are we doing? 56, okay. There's a competition for $100, and I need to tell you that the key word to enter the competition is, and I, you have to sign up with, the, I believe you have to sign up with the, um, the Telegram. Um, sign up on Telegram and use the keyword gold. Gold is the word that can give you the potential to uh, to win a hundred dollars so just put it in on the let me just see what's coming up here just getting a message yep keyword gold so just go into the um go into the telegram account of tisforex.com and it's a free deposit giveaway. They'll give you $100 to put in your trading account. And all you need to do is message them with the word gold. Any questions before we close out of here? We're getting very, very close to closing down time. If anyone's got any questions about the strategies or training as a, a trader, you can get best place to really get me is on Twitter. You can look at Twitter and you can see my trading day in, day out. You'll see me trading and how I trade, and you'll see every position that I take. It's a, a, a transparent way of me showing what I do as a trader. So Twitter, my Twitter handle is at uk to asia at uk to asia And from there, you can get my email and everything else. If you've got any questions about this strategy or anything else to do with trading, feel free to get in touch. And that's about it. No questions coming in. Okay then, guys, I think we'll... Uh, close this down now if that's all right with everyone just checking on the messages coming through anything else coming through no nothing coming in Okay, I'll close out of here now. Thank you very much for attending, everyone. This is going to be recorded, so you'll have access to it at a later date if you need it. And um, look forward to the next one. Thank you very much. Don't forget that keyword is gold if you want to be in for a chance of winning $100. Thanks so much, and I'm sure we'll meet again.